I listen to the radio station and um, I'll listen to the fan every now and again when I'm in the car and somebody will bring up church and they don't know how to deal with it. And it seems like they, they, they almost like try to quickly move on. Senator, I'm watching a, a sporting event. What was it? Wasn't it the Masters? Maybe it was the Masters. I don't know. It was something, and the guy won and, and started talking about Jesus, and all of a sudden, you know, the audio started going in and out and stuff. And, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, is that for real? When was the last time in this modern day and age have you ever seen people having audio problems? Um, you can Google some stuff and you can see some very, very interesting things. Maybe I'll send some links out at some point. My point is this. Guys, we have a decision that we have to make. Um, we can either be true to Christ and true to the gospel and ask the Lord to watch over us and help us, or we can kind of roll with the tide. And there are a lot of churches today that are rolling with the tide. The interesting thing is, lately, I have noticed a handful of churches that I was really fearful that, that was they were going to choose just to get really wishy-washy. And they're like, nope, we're not doing this. And they're going to stay true to preaching the, the word and the gospel. I can't be the pastor of a church that um, is going to be censored. Um, I don't want that. I have sensed um, over the last 10 years or so that probably I have skirted certain issues for fear and thought, you know what, it's not worth it right now. Let's, let's get people grounded and established, and then, you know, we can talk about some of these hard issues and such later. I think I'm done with that. I think we, 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 I, I think that's just nuts to, to do that anymore. Amen. I do think that it's one thing to stand your ground, and it's another thing to blow the ship up. Do we want to blow the ship up? Why would you want to blow the ship up? Okay? Um, the fact of the matter is, is we are about winning people to Christ, teaching them to obey everything that Christ has taught us. If we do that, there's the promise. Surely I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. So are we going to do that? Well, I, I, I'm going to do that. And I, and, and, and I love this church for thousands of reasons. One of the reasons is I've never once had anybody on the board come and say to me, Jeff, you may want to tone it down. Um, never once has that happened. Um, I won't say to you that, and, 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 you know, we want to be careful. I've had people come and say that to me. Um, people that aren't here. Um, I think they got kind of irritated and, you know, au revoir, you know, um, and, and I'm okay with that. And you hate that and you, you grieve that. But what we are about is speaking to the truth and speaking it in love. Now, will the people and will the world hear us if we are speaking to the truth and speaking to the truth in love? I'm talking with love. Will they hear us? What do you say? Is that yes? Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't think so. I think some will. Um, I mean, certainly some will. But I think the far, far majority, especially in the last times, in the last days, they will not. We'll look at passages tonight that, 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 that speak to this. So how should our attitude then be? Well, you can sit there and quote the, the, the scripture, you know, we'll take your, your shoes off and knock the dust off of them and, and protest against them and, and, you know, leave them. You know what? Um, Jesus said that to the disciples. And I think we need to be very, very, very careful in doing that. Have I done that before? 
Many of you know that I have. But I think that that is something that we have to be very, very, very careful. We can continue to show love. We can continue to show grace. Um, and if, if we get slapped on one side of the face, and as the scripture says, we do what? Turn the other cheek, and we get slapped on the other cheek. And, um, you know, how many times do you, do you be, get slapped before you're kind of like, you know what, I think I'm kind of wasting my time here. Kind of wasting my time, my talent, my energy, and those kinds of things. So I, I, I think we're careful. We need to be somewhat wise and careful about that. I don't think we go around and we parade we believe that LGBTQRFG um, is not Christ-like. And for that reason, we oppose that. And we're going to die on, on that hill. And that's who we are. We're the, no, we're not, we're not going to do that. But what we're going to do is as we enter into relationships with those that may be struggling with these LGBTQRFG, LGBTQ uh, things, we will we will talk with them and we will minister to them. We will welcome them in. We in a moment, yeah, I promise. Um, we will we will welcome them in, but what we will not do is say, you know what. It's okay that you're, you're doing these things. If somebody was beating on his wife, we'll say spouse, because I've known a couple, of, a couple of gals to wail on their husbands a few times. If somebody was beating on their spouse, and especially if it was a husband beating on, on, a, on a woman, would we sit there and say, oh, you know what, it's okay, God loves you. God loves you, but um, we wouldn't do that. If we had a, a, a child, a little child, and a child was put in a, in, a, in, a, in a precarious place or whatever else, we would say, nope, nope, we're not doing that. We're not going there. We, but, but society today wants us to make gray areas in, in, in all kinds of places. And the gray areas are probably a lot different today than they were back then. And you know what? That's okay. Oh, they smoke a cigarette. Okay, yeah, well, did you see how much I ate tonight for dinner? I'm not so sure, you know, there's that big of a difference between the, the cigarette and how much I shoved into my face, you know, right, right there, real, real, real quick. Um, I had somebody. Oh, I really, and and, and I don't, I, I don't mean this in a derogatory way. I, I don't have any tattoos on. Tony's got some tattoos, um, but I had somebody, you know, come and say, "Oh, I don't like the tattoos. You know, they're defiling, you know, God's temple and those kinds of things." And you know, well, maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe there's not. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But one thing I, I do know is I'm not going to teach treat Tony any difference just because he's got some tattoos on his arms. And Tony, if I recall right, and, and may, I may be misspeaking, but I, I, I'm not so sure if you didn't say, you know, I kind of wish I hadn't done that. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, yeah, preach, exactly. Yeah, that's all it is. No, it doesn't. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I think there is a big, 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 big difference between somebody who says, you know what, I don't know why, but I've got some, like, issues going on with me to the point where I get angry. I don't know, maybe it was from events that stemmed from my childhood, maybe it was this, maybe it was that, I, I don't know why, and, and the thing of it is, is they probably don't know why, 
And I doubt that person's friends necessarily know why. I, I've not lived in your shoes or your shoes. I don't know what it's like, you know. And so the choices that you guys make today that comes from a worldview um, that's been built upon by the millions of different experiences that you've had in life, uh, how, how could I judge you? That's so foolish of me to do that. But I can sit there and I can say to somebody, hey, before you do that, you ought to really stop and think a little bit. I mean, I say that to my daughter, Bethany, you and Mason are getting ready to buy a house. Maybe you ought to stop and kind of think and consider this, this, and this. You know, it's the same thing, you know, in regards to, to, to sin. Hey, I love you. And, and I had a friend who used to smoke, and it took 10 years um, that person stopped smoking before their lungs peaking pinked back up and stuff and, and got to a good healthy place, you know, I would, you know, suggest and, and recommend to you these things. Guys, we say all the time, let's just let's just revisit this again right now, real quickly. The reason why sin is sin is because God loves us and he knows that sin will always have a negative consequence in your life. Whether it's eating too much, smoking, um, you know, allowing your temper to get the best of you, um, not feeling welcomed, not feeling appreciated, not feeling loved, not feeling pretty or, or handsome, and then having people come and say, well, maybe the problem is these feelings that you have are LGBTQ related. Have you ever considered that? No, it's okay. You don't need to, to feel shameful and, 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 and pray. And, and, and I don't want to go down these paths. But what I am saying is, as Christians, we are to go and speak the truth and we are to speak the truth in love. I told you the story of the 16-year-old kid at the Greenwood Church plant who said he was going to kill himself because he thought he was, he said, I have all these homosexual feelings and stuff. Did I sit there and say, well, you know what? I can't talk to you anymore. Please don't get near me. By the way, you should be saying unclean, unclean as you open my car door and leave. You know, did I do that to him? No, I didn't do that to him. I loved on the kid. I talked to the kid. I said, why do you think you're having these feelings? He shared a lot of different things and we talked about it for a long, long, long couple of years. And I think he found some freedom from that. I can tell you a lot of people that have. I, I would have lost my mind had the government leaders sit there and said and voted and said, you know what, um, we're going to give medicines to these kids um, under the age of 18, even without the parents' uh, recognition or knowledge or okay, I think I would have lost my mind. Fortunately, that legislation, and the thing of it is, Indiana today, black eye. Indiana and I think Wyoming, I think are the two states that said, we're not, yeah, we're not going there. We're not doing this. Dad, I'm sorry I took long. Do you want to you speak to it? I want to show the first slide. Let's bring up the first slide. This is Paul. You, however, know all about my teachings. You know about my way of life. You know what my purpose is. You know about the faith that I have, the patience, the love, the endurance. You also know about the persecution that I have been, been dealing with, the sufferings, what kinds of things have happened to me in Antioch, in Iconium, in Lystra, um, the persecution that I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone, and this is, this is just nuts, this next verse, this is, this is, this is all-inclusive. I don't like all-inclusive words, all 
everybody all the time, every time, you know, big blanket statements. Paul says one here. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Well, now, and, and, and look at this next one. While evildoers and imposters. Now, please note here, you're talking about two different groups of people. You have people that just do evil. They, they, they don't have a motive or, um, how do I say that, that motive? They, it's not like they wake up in the morning and they say, now we got to get those Christians, okay? You're talking about people that are living in this world. Maybe they're in a neutral place, but they come, they've come to this place where they're just doing evil things, okay? That's a whole lot of people in our world today. Um, he says, while evildoers and imposters. Now, what do you think this word imposters is referring to? Who is an imposter? And what is the imposter imposturing? Thank you for not saying pastors. But there are a whole lot of fake pastors out there. Um. My opinion, I won't show you my belly. You know, have you guys, you guys have been around long enough, you know about the belly button thing, right? Do you not know about the belly button thing? Should I? No, I won't do that. I've been outside working. I've been outside working. I, I look horrible. So what I usually do is I, I, I take my shirt and I pull it up and I say, um, what do I say? Um, opinions, thank you. Op Opinions are like belly buttons. Everybody has them, but most of them aren't very pleasant to look at and, and are kind of smelly. Um, mine, especially today. Um, evildoers and imposters. You know, um, there are people that just have goofy opinions, but there are also people that are wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, it's my opinion. But um, we, we have some that are on television pretty much every single Sunday. Wolves in, in, in sheep's clothing. Uh, I'm not going to, to judge because I don't know, but I am going to be a little leery. And I'm going to be leery um, to recommend to somebody, hey, you ought to listen to this guy, you know, or whoever, whatever, Right? Um, so again, while evildoers and imposters will go from bad to what? That's crazy. Deceiving and being deceived. Um, why do you not want to follow a blind guide, especially if you yourself can't see well? Why, if you cannot see well, do you not want to follow a blind guide? What will happen? That's right. Lead, lead you down the wrong path. Jesus, this is, these are Jesus' words. He says, you know, the, these Pharisees, this is Pharisees and these teachers of the law, they say that they are godly people, godly leaders, but many of them are blind guides. And if you follow them, you're going to end up falling into the pit right along with them. And that pit is another word for, you know, the pit, you know, the eternal judgment pit. So we need to be so very, very careful who it is that we are, are, are following. There are some people that are just naive. I get that. I don't want somebody who is naive pouring the foundation and putting up the stem wall on our new building. I can sit there and talk with them, try to lead them to Jesus, maybe even play around a golf with them. But when it comes to really, really important matters, you best be careful. The problem is you often become like the people that you surround yourself with. My dad wants to raise his hand. And if he were to raise his hand, I would not feel uncomfortable one iota just handing him the microphone and letting him speak for the rest of the evening. He has seen this. My mom has seen this. They know this. 
we all have seen and we have all known really good people when they get around and associated with, with other people um, that just bring them down. We are a welcoming church. Sinners are, are, are welcome in here. I don't care if they beat on their wife, if they are LGBTQ, if they, um, for crying out loud, are Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Um, they are welcome in here, right? They're welcome in here. But I want to tell you, if it gets to the place where things become very, very toxic, We'll, we'll, we will talk with them and we will work with them and, and so forth. Now, let's just be candid because this is a, 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 small, a, a small group. This is a loving group of people. Yeah, we're on national internet um, and stuff. But, you know, you have come to me and you have said, hey, Jeff, you know, take a deep breath. Don't go, don't go down a bad place. I appreciate that. That's good. That's loving. Those are things that we need to be about. You know, um, are we all exempt from ever getting to a place where we can become kind of um, toxic? No, no. We, we, we are all there at different times. Lord, help us. You know, and, and, and my friend, you know, if I saw something, I would be quick to come to you and I would be quick to say. I would, you know, regardless and stuff, we... We speak the truth in love even when the things that we say are challenging and difficult. We aren't jerks about it. If you say it well, hopefully they will hear you. If you're a jerk about it, I don't think there's any chance of them hearing you. Right? Um, but as for you, continue what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learn it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation. And that's what we want to do as a church. We want to be able to help one another become more and more wise. These kids downstairs, they have a, uh, a what do you call that? They will pay attention to you for 3.2 minutes on a good day, right? And yet we have people downstairs that are working really, really hard to be very, very effective for those 3.2 minutes so that those kids will learn and glean. Um, okay, let's go and let's look at the next slide, please. Please. So let's go back, please. Second Timothy chapter, oh gosh. Um, that is chapter, is it three? Thank you, thank you. My bad on the typo. Thank you, second Timothy chapter three, thank you. Okay, this is John. These are Jesus' words. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. If you belonged to the world, everybody would like your Facebook posts. I, I would just go back and I look. I don't like Facebook. Tony, I didn't put a thing on your birthday because I haven't been on Facebook in at least in like five or six, seven days, Okay. Um, when I get on it, I'll probably see that I missed your birthday and will wish you a happy late belated birthday or something, right? But um, I am not good with Facebook. Facebook, it makes me worse than better, I have discovered. Um, and so I, I'm careful, but leaders say, leaders that are a lot smarter than me say that I should be on Facebook and whatever that thing that um, Elon bought. Uh, as well, Twitter, um, but I don't do that well. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own, and you would have millions of likes on all your posts. I put a post on there of our, not Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday service. Uh, did y'all notice it? I put it on Facebook. I think I got five or six likes. I put a picture of 
I don't know what it was. It was something else. Maybe I was saying, Bethany's coming home, moving home soon, and I got like 85 likes. Really? Really? Okay. People will, will, will come out of the woodwork. Whoa. Oh, you were at Bucky's, you know, in the background picture of, of me stopping and getting gas at Bucky's for 305, I think it was. Or 205, what would have been 305? I guess it would have been 305. And I got my big Bucky 89 ounce slurpy drink to drive home at 2 in the morning. Um, and, and the, the, you know, people will, 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 but you put something, you know, about Christ and stuff, not, not so much. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Guys, let me just say this to you. It's not bad right now, but it's going to get bad. And you're going to need to, 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 to already have made the decision in your mind how you're going to respond. Um, churches will, will, will be considered, uh, you know, um, by most people. Um, that's kind of, I would say most people already. Um, let me think what it was. I saw a poll um, the other day, I don't remember, is something like 30% of Americans view only 30% that that church is meaningful today. And then I think it was something like 37% see the church as a negative force in America today. You can Google that, probably find those numbers again. Okay, so 35% of people like only lands that church, you, you know, what was, I was watching a movie or something on TV and, oh, it was the Tim the Toolman Taylor new show, uh, Last Man Standing. I was watching it the other night. It's on Up TV, by the way. One of the few things that you can feel halfway decent about watching at night, you know, on television. And the son-in-law, I don't even think they're married. So whatever, is his name Tim on that show? So Tim's, you know, daughter, pregnant, and they have a, and, and the boy, he's like real liberal and, and stuff. And it's like, I don't want you teaching my son about God and religion or anything else and stuff. All you're doing is you're filling their minds full of judgmental stuff and guilt and you know all of these different kinds of things uh tim allen and his shows they, they do a, usually a pretty good job kind of saying what it really is like that is the mentality today church bad but you know differing kinds of you know Ident identifying yourself, oh, that's wonderful that you're exploring, you know, the possibilities of who you really are inside. That's wonderful. But um, church kinds of things, my point is it's only going to get worse, and I think it's only going to get worse in a big time, super fast hurry. How are you going to respond to that? Are you not going to tell anybody that you go to church? How are you going to respond to those things? We'll come back next week. We'll look at the last two passages. I want you to be thinking about these things. Are we going to be jerks? No, we're not going to be jerks. Last thing that we need is to give somebody some more fuel. Oh, my lands. He was so rude. Guys, I, 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 I okay. Um, those of you watching online, God bless you guys, and we'll see you, uh, see you next week.